Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. How do I do that? I review the wines, I grade them and then it's up to you. I review it's up to you. Whether it's a $150 bottle of wine or a $10, $10 bottle of wine, I want to make sure that you're getting your money's worth. Because yeah, yeah, blue collar people do spend $150 on a bottle of wine every once in a while. It happens. Trust me, I've been there. It does happen. Now we're doing, I, I, I'm excited about this one, episode 162, and I'm doing a blind tasting, and Micah, do you think it, Micah's helping me again? Micah, my number one son, actually, my only son, <laughs> my number one and only son. Um, can you, can, can you kind of lift that up and show him the wine rack real quick? Now this is my wine rack where I keep um, all my samples that have been given through me to, from sales reps. And I go through them and I, you know, I review them. But every once in a while, you can bring them back, um, they sit there for too long. And, you know, I mean, we, I forget about them. I, I feel bad for the sales reps that give me these samples. And I, you know, we get busy. We got a lot of things going happen. And then they just kind of get lost in there. Well, these are some of the ones that have been lost. And they're all 2006 and older. So I, I just thought, you know, I'm going to start pulling these out and doing a couple episodes. I'm going to do them blind. And sometimes, you know, um, we see, I just have to say, I have to admit it. Sometimes a, a, a sales rep will give me a, a sample. He says, Stan, I want you to try this. It's a label that we're like, hey, we're not very excited about. And uh, put it in the rack and we forget about it. Now, I do have wines down here that are a little bit more the ones I'm more serious about doing right away. But that's kind of the rack that gets... Uh, you know, ones I just put in there, and um, I don't, oh, I, trust me, I don't, I don't forget about them very often. But these are from the, uh, a little bit further in my past, before I really started saying, okay, this is it. You know, I got two blogs now, uh, Stand the White Man TV, I'm going to get through these things, I'm not going to leave these guys hanging, I'm going to try them. Right now, I don't think you could get any of these, so don't worry about it. But an issue came up, I was reading, I'm doing some reading, some research. And uh, one of the books I'm reading, the guy says, well, you know, most wines aren't made to age. Um, you know, you drink them within the first five years. Now, that could be true. I don't know. I've saved some wines that have aged really nicely that a lot of people wouldn't think can age. I do think wines will get better with age, and I think some you got to be careful. And this is a, another point I want to make with this episode. Got my Bronco, by the way. This is as blue collar as you're going to get because... I've been to a, a guy's cellar, and, then, and I, he's, I, I probably was 350 bottles. And he had sitting in on, in on the floor two crates of 1989 Jordan Cabernet Sauvignon. There is no guarantee that that wine's going to be any good. So I asked him, I said, what are you going to do with this? Are you going to sell it on eBay? Are you got any kids that they're going to inherit the cellar? Because, you know, I said, y you know, you open up and this is a guy who comes to my store and buys cases of inexpensive wine for me to drink well drink some of this stuff it's going to go south how many of you out there and you can answer this if you want make a comment if you feel up to it how many of you have saved wine for too long and now you're nervous about tasting it because you're afraid it's going to be bad now that's not me but if you have been one of those people and i've ran across a lot of those people they think that the wine, they don't want to open it now because they think they've had it too long. Well, open it. Use it for salad dressing. You know, make, make your own salad dressing. Use it to marinate steaks. Just don't leave it in that cellar. It's not going to do any good there. It's not going to get any better. At least try it. So we're going to go through these. Now, you can't get your hands on any of these. This is just kind of fun to see how these wines are doing. They've been sitting here probably way too long. So now we're going to do, we're going to let them do their thing. Number one, I have no idea what these are. I really don't. I put, what, six wines out there? Yeah. And I totally forgot which ones I put there. And I asked Micah if he could bag them for me. So here we go. I'm a little nervous, too. I'll try and guess what they are. 
Let's see what we get on the nose. Well, this is one of the qualities of reduction when a wine gets too old starts breaking down is it starts smelling like meat marinade. You like Worcestershire sauce, all that here. Soy sauce. This has that all over the nose. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens when a red wine gets older. It doesn't always mean it's going to be bad on the palate, but it's definitely a quality on the nose that you get out of wine that starts breaking down. You understand why it could be good for uh, marinating steaks. Yeah. It smells to me just like a, a like a steak I pulled out of the fridge and I marinated overnight. Yeah. I mean, it smells just uh, seriously. It smells just like that. Get a lot of herbal components too. Let's see what we get on the palate. Not terrible. I, I get my pin. Not bad. Now it's not great. Don't get me wrong. It's not great, but it's not bad. I get a little brown sugar. Com component coming through. A lot of raisins, which, duh, it's an older wine. Has a lot of barbecue spices. I think, honest Scott, I think there's some people that love this wine. I mean, I don't mind it. It's not terrible. Um, I'm guessing it's might be a Merlot or a Cab, could be. It has those qualities to it. It, it tastes like a Zin, but I know it's not a Zin because it doesn't have the raspberry. At least I don't think it's a Zin. Based on the fact that I know these are all 06 or older, I know none of them are expensive. And I'm, guess, I'm just going to write down what I think it might be. There we go, number one. Whew. I was a little nervous with the nose on that one, but not bad. Kind of a little yellowtail action going on. <laughs> Rinse the color. Now that's brickish. Red wines, the older they get, they turn more of a duller red color. This isn't terrible. I mean, it's not totally brick action going on. Not bad. Now that smells like a rubber beach ball. I'm getting Micah way more involved than he probably wants to be, but this smells exactly like a rubber beach ball. Oh, <laughs> that's got some skunk to it. <laughs> Yeah, but I get, it just it, it yeah. reminds me of a rubber beach ball. Yeah. In fact, I don't even get any fruit. I do get the stink, yeah, a little bit of stinky, almost like a sweaty stink, like yeah. a little uh, stinky armpit yeah. action. Not a lot of fruit. I get a lot of uh, almost like a, like wet cedar. Yeah. See what we got on the palate. <laughs> That's pretty good. Real minty. I mean, like this is extremely minty. I, it, it just reminds me of mint. Cherries, strawberry, mint, cherry, strawberry. A little thin, but I mean, it's still got good acidity. Get a little like rose petal, red, red flowers come through on the back end. A little bit of tobacco. Hanging on. Wow. Now, mind you, these aren't like ancient wines. We're not like pulling out 1990s here, but these are all under 2006 and under. 
and they're all um, inexpensive wines. I don't think I've had anything in this group that, if I remember right, is not over fifteen dollars. So I don't think so. I can't remember for sure. But this is good wine. I mean, I honest to God, this would be a great pizza wine. This would be great with hamburgers. This would be good with uh, ham. It, it has a real Pinot esque sort of flavor to it, but a little bit more than that. It's a uh, it reminds me a little bit of a Grenache. And the petrol comes through that a little bit on the back end. Wow. Two for two. I feel kind of lucky right now. Trust me, I was a little nervous on this one. That could be way off. Blind tasting like this is tough for any of you who have done it. Number three. Number three. Good job on the lettering there, Micah. Good three. Your threes are better than my threes. One thing you should remember about all this, are these getting in my way? A little bit. One thing you should remember about wine is don't be afraid to try one, even if you think it's bad. It's not you can spit it out. It's not going to kill you. I don't think there's a wine out there that'll kill you unless you have a, a really mad girlfriend <laughs> that wants to poison you or something. I just got done reading Gone Girl, so you kind of know where I'm coming from on that one. Just try it. You can spit it out. I, I actually, honestly, did I ever tell you about that, Micah, where I tasted a wine that smelled like poop and tasted like poop? And I, ran, I couldn't get to the kitchen sink fast enough. I think I remember that. It's the only time that's ever happened. And that's, I'm, I've been a wine guy for a long time. Now, one time when we were, you guys were kids and we were at the kitchen table, I remember I tasted, I can't remember what that wine was about. But that was, there are two wines in the, my career, which is very long. I've actually had to spit out that quick. So don't be afraid to try them. Even if you think they might be gone, you might be surprised. Like this number two, I'd be happy. I'm very curious which one that is. Number one wasn't bad. A little more fruity and brown sugary than I like, but some of you might like that. Let's see what we get on the nose. Ah, this one's corked. Or maybe just old. Slightly corked, not enough to keep me from trying it. It comes and goes, it's weird. Like it, all of a sudden there and gone. This is very challenged on the nose. I'm not getting a lot on this on the nose. There's not, I. A little bit of uh, currants for sure. I get that cardboard, which tells me it might be slightly corked, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Like really old wood, like you know, like an old plank that's been sitting around a long time. Not wet, just that really dry old plank. Let's see what we get on the palate. <laughs> Man, three for three, that's not bad, not bad. This one has actually got a little bit of spice. It's got black licorice. It has currants. A little bit of uh, like boysenberry action coming through. This is old world. I'm getting some really good gravel. Components had a little bit of sweet tannins on the back end. Still has good balance. Not bad. I have no idea what it is. It kind of tastes like a cab, but it, it, it's not. It's, it's old world. That's not bad. It's fun knowing what they are. <laughs> yeah. A little sweet.
sweet on the back end, but you know that's not a flaw considering the age on these wines that I know they are. Stay. Okay. I'm pleasant. All these wines, pleasant, pleasantly surprised. Brown sugar component, but that's not it's not it's not off putting. Alright. Number four. Number four. Okay, let's see what we get on the nose. Ooh, this is the weirdest one. A lot of like uh, rosemary and tarragon. It smells like it's going to the back side, to the dark side. This is very herbal. I mean, like like dried herbs, very much so. Maybe a little sage coming through. I even get a hint of celery. Just a little bit of celery on the back end of this one. The fruit is not there. Barely. A little beet action, like, like, like cooked beets. Let's see what we got on the palate. This is the most interesting nose of the bunch. Has some things going on that I haven't smelled on wine in a while. So let's see what we get. It take it. It tastes like you took all those like sage, tarragon, rosemary, mixed them all up, and put them in a bowl full of black cherries. That's what it tastes like to me. And then it finishes with a little bit of minerality, tobacco. It's a little fruity on the palate, meaning that it's probably past its peak and it's now getting really fruit forward, but it's by far not on the downside. None of these wines, I think, have gone to like vinegar at all. No way. This is not a bad wine at all. I think a lot of people would like this wine. The savory elements with the fruit and then the minerality on the backside. Not bad. A little raisin esque. Raisin, is that a word? Raisin esque? It is now. A little raisin esque with gravel. But the savory element, the, the herbs on it are incredible. I have no idea what this wine is. I'm going to go question mark. I have no idea. I got a minute. I can't get them all. Because they're old, I think sometimes we, uh, it makes it hard. Three, three B minuses and one C plus. So we're just going to like, here's a C plus, B minus. I'm going to put the one I guessed on last. I mean, that I couldn't get last. Okay. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Number one, C plus. I said more lower cab. I was totally off. This is uh, the Garnacha de Fuego Old Vines 2006. Rolls in at $8. This is the one I thought I gave a C plus. Thought it was a little bit over the top. But guess what? That's pretty good for an $8 wine. To taste that good. Number two. I also call, now this one I called a Grenache. The first one was a Grenache. This one I called a Grenache. <laughs> this one impressed me. This was one that had a lot of minty action to it. This is um, Tarragona Falset Etim Old Vine Grenache Unfiltered 
2000 and I have no idea on the price on this one. I tried really hard to look this up. I think I remember getting this for around 11 bucks. I actually bought this one a long time ago. It's not even online, so I don't know. That was 2000. It's like, what, what does that make it? Almost 15 years old? Wow. This next one I gave a B minus. I also guessed a Garnacha, but I know I'm wrong because guess what? We already. <laughs> 2006 San Juan Vineyards Cab Merlot, Yakima Valley. This is our homeboys. I really like this one. This was my uh, a Bridget and I's wedding wine. I still had a few bottles hanging around. $14. This is incredible. For the price, very good. Wow. Very impressive. 2006. Eight years old. Still going strong. So this is one I couldn't guess. This I gave a B minus also. Uh -huh. 2005. Harris Estate Cabernet Sauvignon Maple Valley Chile. Eleven dollars. I was very impressed with this one. Got it. Right there? It's just not zooming. It's not? It's not focusing. Back it up just a little bit. Is that better? It's probably running low on power. Yeah, we're good. Okay. All right, there you go. Pretty impressive pulling these out of, of the shop, out of the rack, and they all showed pretty decently for the money. And I know Harris um, is a very nice wine out of Chile and it's still available. San Juan Vineyards, they rock. 2006. The Tim, I was in the class, and the Fuego. All solid wines. Just remember, wine is not a mystery. It's just fermented grape juice. So, stick to your palate. Trust your palate. Don't let anybody tell you what you should or shouldn't like. And always remember to be experimental. Try different things. And don't let that seller Get too old. Drink your wines. And together we can keep the snob out of wine.